I'm not blowing away. Atiku says after Supreme Court's verdict on the 2023 general election and Rivers impeachment saga lingers. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the February 25, 2023 election, Atiku Abubakar, says he will not leave the political arena despite the Supreme Court verdict of October 26, 2023, that affirmed the electoral victory of President Bola Tinubu. Atiku, who lost his appeal last week against the declaration of Bola Tinubu as president by the Supreme Court, spoke during a press conference at the National Secretariat of the party in Abuja yesterday. Atiku Abubakar said he, said he is, quote, not going away, unquote, and will, quote, continue to struggle with other Nigerians to deepen democracy and rule of law and for the kind of political and economic restructuring the country needs to reach its true potential, unquote. It's bigger than one or two presidential elections. It's a rebuke by retired Justice Musa Datijo Mohammed is a confirmation from within the apex court that all is not well with the Supreme Court. The court and indeed the judiciary must never lend itself to politicization as it is currently the norm of nearly every institution in Nigeria. What we are currently dealing with is bigger than one or two presidential elections and is certainly bigger than Atiku Abubakar. It is not about me. It is about our country, Nigeria, in your future. It is about the kind of society we want to live for the next generation and what kind of example we want to set for our children and their children. It is about the reputation of Nigeria and Nigerians in the eyes of the world. As for me and my party, this phase of work is done. However, I'm not going to go away. If you think, if you think I'm going to go away, forget about it. <laughs> Joining me to discuss this is a Kim Amade. PDP Publicity Secretary, Lagos State. Honorable, how are you today? Uh, um, welcome to Plus Politics. Uh, could it be construed that Vice President Atiku has just uh, announced is uh, is being an aspirant on the ticket of your party uh, in in the next round of presidential elections. A member of People's Democratic Party and is now retired from politics. Having said that, there's no mean that he's going to con contest in the next election. He has not said that, and we are not even there yet. We still have a long way to go. So the process has not even started. What he's saying is that it's going to be part of the reform that Nigeria needs. How do we need to reform our electoral system? These are part of what is contained in his speech. He has not put himself forward that I am con contesting in 2027. He has never said that. And at no further. As they call the members of our party, the national, or have a meeting with the National Executive Council to say that I am contesting the next general election. He has not said that. Okay, um, but let's now look into some of the some of the 
submissions he made in the speech, he almost rubbished the integrity of the Supreme Court. Uh, this same Supreme Court was the court that on a number of occasions vindicated him against the oppression of the then President Olusha Gwambasanjo with the incumbent president being is a formidable strategic lieutenant and using deploying the machinery of the Lagos State Government's uh, judicial system, uh, Ministry of Justice to air particulate his case. Suddenly now, because he has lost at the Supreme Court, uh, the, the Supreme Court is now a cesspit for him. Is that not hypocrisy? If you look at the cases on the way Supreme Courts are back then, are they still constituted the same way? Now you can hear what the last um, the last um, a member of the Supreme Court, Justice that retired a few days ago, he rebuked the member of the Supreme Court, the judges in the Supreme Court. So this is to lend credence to what he said that the judiciary needs a reform. So it is not about rubbishing the judiciary. It's about it is him saying the obvious. But what Nigerians do see is different from what the Supreme Court sees. And a member of the Supreme Court, the, the last judges that retired a few days ago, the last judge that retired a few days ago, articulated the same view that there is a lot that is wrong in the Supreme Court. So he has never, and it has no point in time said that. Supreme Court is the final court of justice and is going to abide by that, but you may not accept the decision. That's exactly what it is, but it's going to accept it, but this is where we are as a country. That's exactly what is happening in Nigeria as we speak. Because we can go way back and see a lot of things that are happening in the Supreme Court. So Supreme Court and the justice system in Nigeria need holistic reforms. A, a cursory examination of uh, some of the allegations of uh, Justice Datijo retired, Supreme Court Justice Datijo retired that he rehashed in his speech a cursory examination of those allegations against his political history will also speak to hypocrisy. He has always been, since 1999, in the firmament of power, and he is one of those who command a lot of resources. How come is now complaining that a uh, judicial system is, is now filled with nepotistic characters. Uh, one is just wondering, is it now that he lost, that he suddenly realized that all these anomalies and aberrations have been normalized for a while? Okay, now this is not about hypocrisy. It is about what is happening now. We believe in the justice system, and that is why he went to court. But he did not accept the last judgment. But that is the final court. And if you remember, months ago, somebody asked him and said, if you lose at the Supreme Court, what are you going to do? He said he leaves everything to God. But at the same time, if you now find that there is a lot that you think is not right in the judgment, as a Nigerian, you have your right to say, this is how I feel about this judgment. Now, because the past judgment has went its way, doesn't mean that if this judgment did not go his way, he should not speak out. And for what he believes in, and for what he expects. So, everyone that goes to court expects a certain judgment. And if it doesn't go your way, and you look at it, then you have uh, the opportunity to say, this is how I feel about this judgment. 
And that is what he has done. He has expressed himself to say, this is how I feel about this. As a Nigerian, you have the right to say your mind. And that's exactly what he has done. Given, uh, 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 and pardon me if I'm getting a bit uh, personal about this, Given what I know to be your antecedents, especially in our diaspora and the Northern Hemisphere, I know you have lived in some respectable jurisdictions be, before coming back home to give your own contribution uh, back to Nigeria. Given what I know to be your antecedents, would you think this is proper in a responsible, in a respectable jurisdiction where a loser suddenly goes out there and lampoons and lambastes the, the justices of the Supreme Court uh, when he knows particularly that they don't have the privilege of, of replying him. Is that the responsible thing to do? Just asking you personally now. Okay, thank you so much. Now, I will now to use the same example that you have just referred to. Because I have just lived, I have been living abroad for so many years before returning back to Nigeria. And I just came back a few days ago from America. And you see what is happening. Now, because you are in Nigeria, it does not give you the right not to speak. You have the right to speak as a Nigerian. The same way in America today, former President Trump is expressing himself about the judiciary, about the judges in America. So there's nothing wrong if you feel that your right as an individual has been trampled upon, or if you feel that, that the, the, the judgment that you expect is not what you get, then you have the right to express yourself to say that, I am not happy with this judgment, and I felt that this judgment should go in certain way. So it is within his right to express himself, and he has done that. So nobody can fault him for expressing himself. But uh, given, given the example, you can now look at what he said to what Justice Dajita 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 said a few days ago. So he went this, you can now see that there's something wrong within the Supreme Court. There is the, need for reform. Given the example that you have alluded to in America, you will agree with me that the court in Georgia and the court in New York are both, are, are both inflicting some degree of punishment on former President Trump for not being circumspect in his use of language about the proceedings in the two courts. So, and to be honest with you, let's be very, very frank with ourselves. Are you now using Trump as a, as a standard character for a Nigerian politician to emulate or imitate? No, what I'm saying is that as an individual, you have certain rights under the law, under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have the freedom of speech to express yourself. And all he has done is to express himself. And he has not contravened any law. Uh, now, uh, and I know that if he has contravened any law, by, by now, you will have had sanctions from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the power to sanction you. So, but they haven't done such. That is to say that he's within his right to say what he said. And that is how we feel. So, every Nigerian has a right and freedom of speech. So, I don't think he has done anything wrong or against the law or against the Supreme Court. That is how we feel about the judgment. And you cannot fault that. Okay, for you, for you is the case of, uh, of spanking a child and not expecting the child to cry, is it? If you say so. But the reality is this. There is no time that anyone goes to court, whether at uh, the senatorial level or at the governorship level, that the governors or the senators do not have one view or the other. It, this should not be different at who is a former, presi a former presidential candidate, candidate of PDP. And by so doing, 
is also a Nigerian who has certain rights as well. So he is not different from somebody who went to court and got certain judgment and said, I am happy with the judgment. Then the others will say that I am not happy with this judgment. So it's still within his right to express himself as a Nigerian under the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So uh, as, the, as the person who is fortunate to be in charge of uh, the publicity machinery of uh, the PDP in Lagos, unarguably, apart from the national uh, the national publicity uh, secretary of the party, uh, one would want to believe this is the most popular state, uh, you know, most popular uh, federating unit in Nigeria. Uh, one would want to believe that uh, they must have somebody who is uh, capable in place in Lagos. But having said that, as somebody who holds this position, do you think it is proper for somebody as eminent as Vice President Atiku to be addressing a world, a so-called World Press Conference twice in three weeks, twice in less than one month? There is nothing wrong. Like I said earlier on, as a Nigerian, and also, uh, also the leader of the opposition in Nigeria. So there is nothing wrong. Tomorrow, if you have something to say about what is going on, in the country, he can address the press conference. Don't forget, he's the leader of the opposition now. So, by so doing, if something is not right, it's within his right as a Nigerian to express himself and to say this is where my party is on this issue. And so there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong, my brother. Okay, let's come back to Lagos now. Uh, we cannot but engage you on the uh, on the activities in Lagos as the PDP publicity secretary. What is your take of governance in Lagos today? You can see the way Lagos is in Lagos state today, and I've said this many times. There is no reason, after about 24 years of APC government in Lagos State, that we should still be having flood, flooding in Lagos State. The channels are all blocked. All these channels are supposed to have been cleared in preparation for the rainy season. That is still there. We still have security issue in Lagos. That is still there. We have the agro issue in Lagos State, which the government of Lagos State has not been able to resolve. The government of Lagos State is getting involved with uh, this uh, Agbero issue. It shouldn't be. The, the people of Lagos State wanted a governor who will look out for their needs to provide accommodation, good schools, uh, the healthcare facilities. All of them should be up and running. We still don't have all of this done. Now, the amount of money that is accrued to the state government on a monthly basis should be enough to turn Lagos around. Lagos is supposed to be the mega city of, the, uh, of Nigeria or Africa. But where we are today, there is no reason why we cannot be better than Dubai with the amount of money that the state government is generating in Lagos State. And the kind of things that they are doing, particularly for those, see, if, if you go to Lagos Island today, where Prince Owolu, uh, Mr. Babajide Owolu said he grew up, go and look at what Lagos Island is today. Look at what uh, uh, Ojo is today. Look at what uh, some part of uh, Sherry looks like today. These are Lagos State. Look at Lekki. You cannot be constructing an highway in Lekki, and people are stuck in traffic for five, six hours. It is not done. When you are consulting, constructing, you keep one leg open so that the people can go. You cannot be constructing, doing both roads together at the same time. 
Lagos State need the Lagos State government need to open all alternative roads in Lagos State so that we don't have what we have today. If you want to go to Ekpe today, you cannot use Ikorodu Ekpe Road. It's so bad. Okay. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Is it the, uh, the city, uh, the um, Ikoni or GRA Keja? I, 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 I am not the mouthpiece of the government or the spokesperson of the ruling party, but you want to agree with me that uh, you would to agree with me that the traffic congestion you're talking about in Lekki are very despicable in some respects. I can't but agree with you on that, but you want to agree with me that is in the context of the fact that that road is being is being done, uh, and development naturally also comes with some with some uh, inconveniences. You want to agree with me? You want to agree mm -hmm. with me that as somebody who just returned from Nestor of America a couple of days ago, you want to agree with me that uh, even in this uh, Nino season, uh, many may not know that. Uh, we are having an unusual phenomenon that is called the Nino, and that is why we are still having rains in Lagos, uh, entering almost almost entering into November. You know, you agree with me that even in uh, even in uh, America, where you are coming from, especially uh, New York, New Jersey, Axis, they have been flooding. How would you respond to that? Thank you very much. See, let's take this axis that you will find. Lagos State Government. I don't think there is any projection for Lekki Axis. Now, and this is why I say this. We know that relocation of Lagosians towards that axis is so high. Now, as at now, even the lanes that we have in that axis, with the kind of industries that are relocating to that area, does not even measure up to the infrastructure that you have cannot even take the volume of development coming to that axis. So the, the government needs to be ahead. They need to be ahead of the development. There should be a projection that in 10 years, this is what this place will look like. You understand? Now you are looking at that same road with still maintaining three lanes. By now, there's no reason why we should not have a wider lane, more lane. You are having uh, the, this same road is the one that will lead to a bed, the new, um, the film city that they are planning. This same road, the, this same road is the one that is going to accommodate the new airport. This same road is going to accommodate the new, uh, sorry, the Dangote refinery. The volume of traffic that is going to come to that axis. We are not even prepared for it. Talk less what we have now. I, I understand that there is a natural, a natural, natural phenomenon right now about the ozone layer. But the point is this. Are we ready? What are we doing in preparation for that? Okay, that's... As a government, that... you need to have a focus and then prepare for the rainy season. Not when the rainy season that, arrives, that's when you'll be running up and down. Okay, and that, 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 that's the better... If we are well prepared... That's a better place to leave it. It's one of these things, little by little. Okay, that's a better place to leave it. Uh, we hope to give the legal state government's uh, side to an equal opportunity to come and defend themselves. Uh, thank you for guesting on uh, Plus Politics. We really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We're going to a short break now. When we're back, we'll take on issues in River State.